Hello guys, and today I'm going to show you how to sculpt in Forger. Forger 3D. It's a sculpting app. Or 3D modeling app that you can sculpt in. So, let's get into it. First, you can start with these templates, plane, cube, spear, bust, and body. Now, I just recommend start with spear, so... Sphere, so we're going to do that. And you have this big ball, which is the sphere. And so... You could also just go and start anew by pressing this new button. And now you just have the plane, and you can add whatever object you want. So press the plus button. And you can go add any shape you want. I'm just going to go for the sphere, because that's the basic shape. Now, this is just the basics of the app and what tools there are. So... First things first, is you have the standard tool. Now, this is just for standard adding stuff to your mesh while sculpting. And you can adjust the brush settings so you can make it bigger, more sensitive, less sensitive, and smaller. Um, but you could do really whatever you want. But there's the undo button and redo button, so let's just undo all that. So let's just try and sculpt the basic face. There, There's first this plus minus button, and the standard adds to your mesh. So pressing that button or, and holding it while you're using it will subtract from your mesh. So if you go over here, hold the button, and let's just say you do that. You're digging in to the thing, which is making whatever you're making, like a smiley face or whatever. I prefer not to use the standard tool, but for beginners, I'd recommend to use it. Next up is the clay tool. Now, this will do is add to your mesh, but like clay it on there rather than compare it to the standard tool. It will just, like, pile and pile and pile on. Um, but with the clay tool, we can do is just add this guy some hair, let's say, for example. Um, we could just add him some hair by doing that. Oh, and by the way, when you use Forger, I recommend to use the, uh, a stylus because that can really help, um with like, you know, um, sculpting things. And so I'm not using a stylus right now, I'm just using my finger. And uh, this may not look that good, but it's just for the tutorial. And remember that plus minus button, you could smooth it out using doing that. And adjust the brush sensitivity and the size. And just smooth it. That's a tip I use for smoothing sometimes. Um, subtracting your mesh a little bit. Um, if you need to, like, smooth things out a little, but we'll get to the, small, the smooth tool later. He looks handsome, actually. Anyways, next thing, next tool is the move tool. Now, what this is, what it will do is, it will move parts of your mesh away from the mesh. So, like, let's say we made this big. It's basically, like, a big distortion thing, so you can distort your mesh or move it around. Doing that, now that looks horrible, but that's just an example to show you how to use it. You can move this around. Maybe you want him to have a bigger head. Although, uh, that looks horrible. That too. So, um, yeah, that's the move tool. You can maybe move some of his hair back if you need. It doesn't actually add any vertices or anything. It just moves and smudges your stuff. Not really smudge, but, like, removes your things over. Uh, if you need it to be moved over. So, yeah. The next tool is flatten tool. Now, what this will do is basically flatten your guy. So, it's it's subtracting from your mesh. Um, and if you press this plus minus button, it'll add to your mesh. Because... If anything subtracts, if you press that invert button, which I think is as it's called, um, then it'll make it add if it if the tool normally by default subtracts 
but if this by default adds, then it'll invert it into subtracting. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. And flatten that, make his mouth more open. So that's the flatten tool. Next tool is layer tool. I don't really use this too much, but it's basically to, you know, layer on your clay and stuff um, for your sculpt. So it's layering some more clay each time. So you can just, you know, undo all of this. And let's actually make that for a purpose. So let's just say we want to layer his hair out a little bit. So add a little bit layering and you can always go back use the previous tools and you know smudge that out and you adjust the brush size make it smaller or bigger you have nicer hair um and yeah you can layer out however you want although this tool i don't really use that much because i don't find it too useful and like I don't really use it, so doesn't mean you can't use it. If you need it, use it. Um, but yeah, that's the layer tool. Pretty basic, actually. Next tool is the inflate tool. Now, this will do give him a blob. So let's just say, like, you do that. He has a big zit on his face, but that looks horrible. Um, let's just say, like, we put these big inflammatory... He has a inflammatory face, or, like, it's not regular. Um, whatever it is, you can use this to, like, put blobs on your mesh and stuff. Uh, bulges, bulges and stuff. However, I use this for, like, parts of a mesh, like, let's say, uh, a reptile or something. Like, a frog. And, like, he has that, like, blob at the end of his thing. I'd, you know, use that for the end. That's something that this tool may be useful for. So, next thing is pinch. And what this does, well, you guessed it. It pinches your stuff. So, like, let's just adjust that. What it'll do is it kind of, like, it pinches it up. So, when you pinch something, you know how just, like, it's, it, like, if you pinch your hand, it... It uh, leaves like that mark. Well, that's what happens if you pinch something here, too, because that's what pinching does. It pinches it, and it, like, squishes it together, and then makes it a little edge. Now, I don't use pinching too much. Um, I find it only useful if, like, I need something to be, like... I don't, know, I don't really find this tool that useful, but you can use it for what you need. The next thing is smooth. Now, the smooth tool, well, you can smooth things out. So, you know how his eyes are, like, you know, crazy? Oh, we could smooth them out. Oop. Nah, that doesn't look good for an eye. Okay, that looks better. Just smooth that out. And, um, maybe you can smooth his hair out and say you think it's a little sharp. Uh, doesn't look right. You can smooth it down. Also, you could use the invert tool to invert what it does. It basically smooths by adding uh, if you invert it. But now you can smooth his hair up and stuff and touch your mesh up. And I use the smooth tool, smooth tool a lot if like, I find blobs on my thing. Or um, if I need to like smooth it out because it's too like rough. Uh, so, the next tool is the crease tool. Now, what this will do is, like, crease inside your mess. Basically, basically an inverted crease, or, in, sorry, inverted pinch. So, like, it'll pinch in almost. That's what a crease kind of does. So, let's just say we want to crease in his eyes and his mouth to make it more definitive. We could go back, use the smooth tool, and set that like that. You can see his eyes look a little more defined now. But, I don't want those pinches, or not pinches, creases on the side of his face. So, we'll undo them just by pressing undo. Alright, so yeah. That's what the crease does. We'll just define his eyes more. And mouth. And see it's defined more. I could be smooth, like I said. 
to smooth his eyes out. And, um, yeah, that's basic. This, that's really the end of the basic tools. Uh, the other stuff is start is gonna start getting a little more complex. But again, I'm only covering the tools that affect your mesh. Not in, like, not coloring or transforming or any of this stuff like that. I just want to show you the actual tools that affect your mesh in the way that like, you're adding or subtracting. So the next tool is scrape, and what this will do is it's kind of like flatten, but except it's scraping off your mesh. So like, let's say we adjust that pretty big. It's see, it's starting to like scrape off the bottom of him, like that. I find it's pretty useful in faces. <laughs> And other things, like if you're, if you're trying to smooth something out and then you just get the scrape tool, scrape it up. And what this will do is you give you a little, like, face. Um, or, like, a little, what do you call it? Face on the object or mesh that you're using and working on. So, we just undo the scrape because he doesn't need to be scraped up like that. And we'll just scrape some of his hair, actually, because that needs to be... You know, kind of scrape, scrape, and get flatter, flatter the more back it goes. And so, uh, yeah, you do that, and see his hair looks a little more proper um, than it did before. So next thing is polish, and what this will do is, let's say you have a lot of blobs. I'm gonna inflate the, the, yeah, no, let's make that smaller. A lot smaller. Let's just say I have some, like, blobs over here on my mesh. Polish, what this will do is kind of smooth the blobs out back into the mesh, kind of. So if we, like, do this, what this will happen is it's polishing down till it's, like, it's not as, like, sticking and poking out as it would have been. And so it's just polishing down those things until it looks like more part of the mesh, or at least more, like, smooth. Kind of smooth, but, like, polishing your thing down. Um, I don't know how to explain it. Leave a comment down below if you have a better idea how to explain it, please. Uh, next thing is planar. What this will do is the same thing. It's similar to the blob, so let's just say we inflate him again. Uh, planar, what this will do is plane it, basically. Make it a plane at the part so like look it's kind of like flattened but you can see how it like just planes as you tap on something it makes it flatter like immediately because it's what this will do is uh it's i call it the planer i think that sounds better but um see what this is doing is like getting these blobs and stuff flattened and this part of his back of his head flattened so now this looks not better actually and then we could just smooth it out maybe um so you need like you need to get rid of some details that were there and redo them you could put r something like that um so yeah the next thing's pull now this is like move except it pulls your mesh so it like you can pull it rather than like moving it so <laughs> it looks weird but uh, let's say we just pull his hair back. See, it's actually, like, pulling the hair. Although, we need to do the... Oh, God. Oh, God. Um, that's not a smiley face. Okay. So, we'll just undo this. And let's just say you want to, like, pull his hair forward because you want him to have, like, a 2P. Or, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> Something. And we want to hit his hair to look cool, right? And so you want to pull it out. And we could go back to the older tools and, you know, define that crease right there of his hair. Uh, maybe you slice some detail on the hair there, smooth it out. And you see his hair is now cool looking or has like a spike. Um, so those are the basic tools. The, how many tools? The 50. No, the 13 basic tools that are in Forger that you can use to affect your mesh. And see, we actually created a pretty cool guy. Pretty cool face and stuff. Um, 
Looks pretty nice. Pretty nicely sculpted. And so, this was just the 13 basic tools uh, in Forger, how to use them, and how they work. So, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I really hope you learned something from this tutorial. See you again next time.